Hi guys, welcome to this set of videos. What we're gonna do here as we go through this set of notes is we're going to take a deeper look at the, um, the proportions that we can set up for similar triangles and some of the things that we can solve for. What we did in the last chapter or two is we first studied what are similar triangles and then we took a look at the ratios and the proportions that we can set up between similar triangles. And like I said, what we're gonna do here through this set of notes and the ones to follow is take um, a little deeper look. We're gonna take a look at some of the other things. We can use those similar triangle proportions for and to solve for. So let's go ahead and jump right into this one. What we're gonna do here with our essential question is we wanna know when a parallel line to one side of a triangle. So we're gonna have a parallel line it intersects the other two sides, and you'll see exactly what that looks like here in just a second. I wanna know how does it divide those sides, all right? So this is the question that we wanna answer here in this set of notes. Let me highlight our essential question for you with my highlighter, which needs to be much bigger. Sorry about that. Here we go, does that do it? Oh, that is still too small, hold up. Boom, there's a highlighter. All right, cool, so there we go. So this is our essential question, uh, and then how are we gonna go about answering that essential question? Well, we have several objectives or learning targets, things we're gonna talk about as we go through this to help us understand a little bit better um, this idea. of the proportions that we can see in similar triangles. So let's go ahead and jump right into this with our first theorem that we have right here. This is going to be the triangle proportionality theorem and it essentially says exactly what our essential question was asking. Remember, our essential question was what happens when we have a parallel line through a triangle. It's a parallel line to one of the sides. And that's exactly what I've got right here. What I've done is I've drawn this line through the triangle. It intersects two of the sides of the triangle and is parallel to the third side. All right, so that's exactly the situation that our essential question was setting up. What we wanna take a look at is, well, what does that do? So what we can see here, or from the triangle proportionality theorem, is that it sets up a proportion within the triangle. And let me help explain this proportion to you just a little bit right here. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this triangle we already have a picture of, that way I don't have to draw another one. All right, so the question is this. How do I know, how do I know that triangle AEF, let me put that one in red. So triangle AEF just that little guy right there, and our, our proportionality symbol. How do I know that that is proportional to triangle A, B, C? This guy in green. So the question is, how do I know that those two triangles are proportional? Well, we learned in the last chapter several postulates and theorems that help us prove that two triangles are similar. In this case, what we're gonna do is we'll go ahead and use the AA triangle similarity. Here's how it's gonna work. Please notice that both triangles share the angle A. So I know that the angle A is of course congruent to the angle A. Well then, do I know another one? Well, sure I do. Once again, we've seen this coming out back over and over and over again. If we go back to a previous chapter where we talked about parallel lines, which I have right here. In fact, my diagram even tells you that they're parallel because it puts those little arrows on the line. So I know that these lines are parallel and those parallel lines are cut by a transversal. So what do I know? Well, just taking a quick look at it, I know then that angle, uh, angle E and angle B have to be the same angle. Why? Well, they're corresponding angles. So angle B is congruent to angle E thanks to corresponding angles.
You could have just as easily, if you had wanted to, let me erase my transversal, you could have used the other side. I'll leave my parallel lines. And if you want to, sure, go ahead. Use the other side of the triangle as your transversal. It's going to be the exact same thing, except now it's going to be angle C and angle F that are for the exact same reason. Corresponding angles, they are congruent. Angle C is congruent to angle F. Why? Once again, corresponding angles. Well, now that I know, right, remember the theorem is as long as I have two angles that are congruent, I know that those triangles are similar. So the angle angle triangle similarity And based on right that triangle similarity, here's what I know. I know then that in red here, I'll do it right down here so I don't run out of space. I do know or I have just confirmed that triangle A, E, F is proportional to triangle A, B, C. Okay, so what? They're proportional. What does it mean? Well, here's what it means. Because those triangles are proportional, thanks to what we've already talked about, I know I can now set up proportions. And that's exactly what the theorem does for us. So let me go ahead and highlight some important stuff here in the theorem. Again, all we're doing here is just talking about these parallel lines, right? So I have a parallel line running through my triangle. It's parallel to the third side. And what it does is it tells you this. You can set up a proportion and it is this. This length AE is proportional to the length EB. Just as the length AF, AF is proportional to the length F to C. All right, so that's how this triangle proportionality theorem works. And again, you'll see it here in the next couple of example problems. First, I know the triangles are similar. And because they're similar, I can write these proportions. So on the next page of the notes, what I got for you is a couple of example problems for you to go ahead and see how these triangle proportionalities work. All right, right here, I have a triangle for you. I have a larger triangle right here in green. I have uh, in green, I apologize. Can I promise I'm not colorblind? That is actually the color red. I'll do the smaller triangle in green. There he is right there. All right. Are these triangles similar? Yes, I don't even have to prove it. Look, I've got parallel lines that divides, right, the larger triangle and cuts it off so that I have then a smaller triangle. I already showed you that they're going to be similar triangles thanks to the angle-angle triangle similarity. You don't have to prove it every time. We proved it one time. We know every time we've got a line parallel to the third side, I'm going to have similar triangles. So all I have to do then is set up the proportions. Well, here's the way the proportions worked. Remember, it was the distance from A to X Oh, sorry, hold up, I apologize, one second. The distance from A to X is proportional to the distance from X to B. That has to be equal to the distance A to Y, which is going to be proportional to the distance Y to C, or, or CY, I'll call it CY since they asked me to find CY. Well, at this point, guys, plug in what you know, and then it's just going to be algebra from here. This is the geometry, right? The geometry is the, um, the triangle proportionality theorem. That's the geometry you have to know that lets you set up this. Once you've set up this, it's just algebra. We plug and chug. Uh, AX is 9. BX is 4, that's all going to be equal to AY is 10 all over CY. Alright, now the question is, how do you go ahead and solve this guy for CY? Let me fix my Y because he's looking a little 
broken. There we go. So how do we go ahead and solve this guy? Well, we actually solved these proportionalities in a previous section. We said all you have to do is just cross multiply. So I'll multiply the four to this side, multiply the CY to this side. Let me scoot on up here so I have a little extra room. Multiply over the CY and I'll have nine CY. Nine CY. Multiply the four to the other side and of course you would get four times 10, which is 40. Well, how do I get that CY by itself? Yeah, divide both sides by nine. CY is equal to 40 over nine, or 40 nuts. Found CY. Hey, let's keep going, let's try another one. Again, the more practice you get at these, the better we'll get at them. In fact, even maybe the faster we'll get at them. Let's again go ahead and just highlight our triangles. Let me do the larger triangle in red. There he is right there. I'll do the smaller triangle in green. There he is right there. I don't even have to show it. I don't have to prove it. We already did it. You know, because these lines are parallel, the triangles will be similar by the angle-angle triangle similarity theorem. So we go ahead and set up our proportionality. Here we go, they want me to find PN. So we'll start with the other side, NQ. Must be proportional to QM. Then, I know that NP must be proportional to PL. Again, that's really the trickiest part, that's the geometry. Do you recognize the triangle proportionality theorem and can you use it to set up the proportion? Once you set up the proportion, uh, from there it should be the easy part, the algebra part, where we are solving for our unknown, NP or PN, it doesn't matter. Um, in fact, here, let me go ahead and switch it so that we don't get confused. PN, NP, they're the same thing, but I'll write it the way I have it here. So, we plug and chug, let's see what happens. NQ is five. QM, that's two. Gonna be equal to PN or NP. I, I don't know, that's the one they want me to solve for. And then I've got um, PL is three. Okay, now in this one, again, it is a proportion, but now, careful. Let's not work harder than we need to, right? Just take a second and think for a minute. Up in the previous one, I had to cross multiply. The reason I had to cross multiply is because the side I was solving for, CY, was in the denominator. But please notice in this one, PN is in the numerator. There's no reason to cross multiply. You're just creating more work for yourself. I will get PN by itself and all I have to do is multiply three to the other side. So that's what we'll do. We will multiply both sides by three. Those threes will cancel each other out. And we will get that PN is equal to, well, here we go. Three times five is 15. 15 divided by two, 15 halves. So, in some cases, yes, like the one above, you'll need to cross multiply. In some cases, it'll just be really easy. Just multiply that denominator to the other side to get your variable by itself. Let's keep going. I got a couple more for you here. We should be able to fly through these next couple pretty easily. Feel free to work ahead. Check back to see that your answer matches mine. The larger triangle in red. The smaller triangle in green. Set up the proportionality. It will be EC is proportional to CF, which has to be equal to ED, which is gonna be proportional to DG. Okay, well the one I'm trying to solve for is DG. That's the only one I don't know. Plug in what we've got and solve. EC is 32 over 24 which is gonna be equal to 40 over DG. So in this one, what do I have to do? That, sorry, that does not look like a G, let me fix that. In this one, while I do that, while I fix my G, do I need to cross multiply or is it simple? Yeah, what I'm trying to solve for is in the bottom, cross multiply. All right, so here's what that's gonna mean. I will then have 32 
DG is equal to 40 times 24. Uh, let's see, what do we get? 40 times 24 should be 960. Divide the 32 to the other side and DG is going to be equal to uh, 960 divided by 32. I get 30. Right. One more before we try something else. Once again, let me give you the triangles here because it helps to high. I like highlighting them. Uh, if it helps you seem a little bit better to write the proportion of all of these or, or to write your proportions, please. Please feel free to use it. The larger triangle in red, smaller triangle in green. Now let's go ahead and write these guys. It looks like it's going to be a PQ is going to be proportional to QM, which then is going to be no, 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 no. Sorry, 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 sorry. Scratch that, scratch that, scratch that. I need to start with M. MQ to QP. Let's start with M because that's the point that they have in common, right? I, I am so sorry about that. In fact, actually, that is good. Please be careful of that. It's a very common mistake and it's a mistake we don't want to make. MQ is proportional to QP. Awesome. Then MR proportional to RN. And Rn is the one I'm trying to solve for. Again, I got to start with this common vertice, right? This is the vertice that both triangles have in common, right? P is only a vertice in the larger triangle, the triangle outlined in red. That's not right. You can't use that. I need to start with the vertice that both triangles have in common in all of these. We use the vertice that the triangles had in common. So anyway, here we go. Plug and chug. MQ8 over 5 is going to be equal to 10 over, I don't know, cross multiply. We'll get Rn, uh, I'm sorry, it'll be an 8. Rn is equal to 50. Divide the 8 to the other side. 50 over 8, which I believe will reduce to 25 fourths. Yeah. We'll call it 25 fourths. Okay, guys, so what we'll do then, um, that takes care of sort of this idea of the triangle proportionality theorem. What we'll do on the next page of notes is look at the converse of the triangle proportionality theorem, and I'll meet you there.